And now, L Luke asked for it, because on his blog last week, he was like, hmm, Rosh Hashanah's coming up, you know, what will be the uh, Ten Commandments for Luke 4? And I was like, well, this is too good. <laughs> I'm going to do the Ten Commandments now for Luke 4. Do you want Levy for it or Luke for it? Doesn't matter. Okay, you ready for yeah. it? Okay, so here they are. Here they are. Can you handle it? <laughs> Why did you say speaking of hypocrisy? How, how, what? Because you just know my my flavor is to, to point it out. I think I think some of my hypocrisy is pretty obvious. <laughs> but that's cool. You wear your hypocrisies on your shirt. Okay, so who's ready? Who's ready? Here we go. The Ten Commandments for Lady Luke Ford. Are you ready? Let's yeah. have a drum roll. Da 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 da. You shall laugh at Christianity and compare. Believing in Jesus to believing in Spider-Man. But at the same time, you shall understand that the Lord God, King of the Universe, is clothed in the body of a man. And that man's name is Dennis Prager. <laughs> Commandment number two. You shall condemn liberals and, and state that Prager is correct for labeling for labeling the liberal agenda as a form of idol worship. But at the same time, you shall insist on smearing Torah-observant Jews with derogatory liberal terminology such as orthodox. <laughs> Commandment number three. You shall take great pride in the fact that you became a Jew by having a orthodox conversion and even though one of its conditions is to separate from non-orthodox philosophies, nevertheless, you shall continue to quote Prager's every word as if it were holy, even though the man has publicly stated that he identifies with the reform. <laughs> yeah? Conda uh, commandment number four. You shall rant at great length about how all from Jews must act holy. But at the same time, when it comes to your own Torah learning, you shall have no problem quoting from books written by outright heretics. Number five. Upon discovering that Jacob Milgram didn't write a commentary on Deuteronomy, leaving you without your favorite source for Torah talks, you shall actually consider quoting from the King James Version of the Christian Bible. Not that anyone would notice the change, because it too uses Goyish a term such as Israelites, sacrifices, and priests. Commandment number six. You enjoying this? <laughs> okay. Number six, you shall invite Rabbi Rabs to join you for Torah talks. Not because the famous comedian is popular, or that he will add humor to your website, or even because he will bring his following of hot young chicks your way, but rather you shall do so only because you want to poke your finger in the eyes of all of the shuls that banned you for years earlier, and you do so by having a hardcore from a rabbi attack them every week. <laughs> How much of that is true? <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. You shall publicly repudiate anyone that calls modern Orthodox rabbis with the top the derogatory names such as cow, moron, or idiot, even after they apologize for doing so, but at the same time you shall have no problem that two of your own friends in the chat room publicly trash Rabbi Rabs each week in some of the worst ways imaginable, insult his intelligence, and question his knowledge, and they never apologize for doing so. Hmm. You wanted to call out hypocrisy. <laughs> Commandment number eight. You shall irrationally allow childish hecklers into the chat room to continually destroy the rising popularity of your live broadcasts. 
but at the same time you shall wonder why others suggest you are self-destructive, why you have underachieved in your career, and why women are not overwhelming you with offers to be the, their father of their own children. <laughs> Commandment number nine. <laughs> Here we go. You shall take a hard line and judge every Jew strictly for their imperfections. Condemn those that dare to showcase their indiscretions. And act disgusted when seeing from looking Jews commit sins in public. But at the same time, you shall have no problem acting inappropriately by filming yourself touching and fondling younger women and then publishing that disturbing footage onto the internet. <laughs> and the final one, commandment number 10. Can I have a drum roll? Da 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 da. I don't know if I can say this one with a straight face. <laughs> Just close the door in case it's... I don't know what's going to happen here. All right, here comes commandment number 10, the final commandment for Lady Luke Ford. Here we go. Are you ready? Even though that you claim that your porn days are behind you, nevertheless, you shall invite attractive women to do nighttime interviews in the same room in which you sleep, so that after the broadcast, you can go to bed while their scent is still lingering in the air, making it much easier for you to jerk off while thinking about them. <laughs> and those are the Ten Commandments for Luke Ford. Thank you very much. <laughs> I didn't see those ahead of time, so those are just the raw deal. <laughs> I'm glad you're laughing. <laughs> you're going to kill me on that last no. one. <laughs> Where are the hecklers? <laughs> Here, you can save me. Thank you. And now on a more uplifting note, <laughs> it is uh, 7, uh, 7.33 and uh, Temperature is dipping down to about 65 degrees. Outside, traffic moderate on Pico Boulevard at this hour. We're going for a high of 75 degrees tomorrow. And uh, this week's Pasha is Hazinu, which is the last part of the Book of Deuteronomy. And uh, it's, it's the Pasha that we always read just before Rosh Hashanah. No. Pretty much. No. It's never read right before Rosh Hashanah. Oh, okay. The part we talked last week. We said last week, Nitzavim is always read right before Rosh Hashanah. Ah. Uh. Hazinu is coming after Rosh Hashanah. Ah. Uh. And it either it always comes, either comes before or after uh, Yom Kippur. Right. And then the last parsha of the year is Bezos Bracha, which we read on Simchas Torah. So exactly. the second is it always the second to last parsha, and it's always read in Tishrei. And uh, what's special about this Parsha? What is very special? Talmud says something very special about this Parsha. It's, it's a, a very, song? It's a song. It's a very short Parsha. It's not the shortest one, but it's yeah. short. Yeah. But there's something special about it. Do you know what that is? No. Don't worry. Okay. The thing that's special about it is it says that um, the entire history of the Jewish people is mentioned in this week's Parsha. All the way from... Oh, yeah. From the beginning, right. our, our history, all the way going back and prior right. to that point, and all the way to the end of time. You know, mm -hmm. everything is in it. It's like a prophecy for the future. Like you know, the Holocaust is in it, and uh, what's ever going on right now? What's going on right now in the world? Uh, uh, Israel. What's what are they doing? Fighting for their survival. That would be that would be included in this week's parsha. Like everything is in it. You know, I've never tossed off to Rabbi Ali. You never what? I've never tossed off to Rabbi Ali. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you some, some sort of something on that one. <laughs> I just want to make that clear, Rabbi Ali. And she was a fr she's always been a friend. And I told you you're going to kill me on that last one. <laughs> 